Okay. Hello, everybody. The title of my talk is Warsploit, Gaming Plus Hacking. Can everyone hear me? No. Okay. Who am I? I'm Mike Willis. That's my email address on the mailing list. I never say anything. I'm 16 years old. I'll be 17 in May. Uh, a few random facts about me. I'm a game programmer and designer. Indie stuff, nothing professional. I'm an aspiring polyglot. I want to speak several languages, but I can't do it just yet. And I really, really like technical death metal. Technical death metal. Yes. <laughs> what is Warsploit? A multiplayer cyber warfare simulator with actual hacking instead of piped in-map output. <laughs> Summary. Players hack servers. Players gain remote control of the servers. Players get currency at fixed intervals multiplied times the total number of servers they control. That's a mouthful. Players defend servers they control from other players. Stuff. Profit. The profit is implied at step three. Um, mechanics. I'm getting there. <laughs> World map. So this is a. Uh, the original idea was okay. Hackable servers would be superimposed on a representation of an Earth-like world. The original idea was to have them be an actual Earth with countries like America, China. But me and my my dad said that was a really bad idea. So I went with randomly generated countries, continents, oceans, and all that. And the servers that players can hack will be randomly placed on this globe. Teams and countries. Players would be able to make teams. Being on a team would increase how much money you make from each server you control. A team big enough that controls uh, servers over land they want to claim and declare their borders, they can start a country. And countries have a population people live there that aren't players, they're just <laughs> numbers really. Uh, and you can build infrastructure, I use that term loosely, that your population can use. Infrastructure would be things like, well some of that is an infrastructure, but roads, trains, buses, airports, planes, cars. And all of these things have computers in them. And if anyone here is like me, put it, having things, computers and things like those is an incredibly bad idea. No, especially since they're almost never secure. So in game, they're not secure at all. And you would have to pay money to upgrade them so they won't be hacked. And infrastructure that you control, that you hack into, that belongs to a country, you can use that to kill people. Real world effect, if you will. And your population will go down when people die, and the country dies when everyone in the country dies. I've already started playing this game. <laughs> the marketplace. It's where you buy stuff. You can buy upgrades for your servers and infrastructure to patch vulnerabilities so other players can't hack you. Uh, exploits, as opposed to a simple buffer overflow, maybe buy some fancy new buffer overflow. I'm not really big on the security stuff, so details, payloads, and other stuff I haven't quite figured out just yet. And victory, how someone wins the game. A single player, team, or country controls all of the available servers that the players can hack, or all of the servers belong to a country, and one country kills off all the other countries. And the technology behind this that I think would work, or um, bleh. the in game servers would, I think they would best work out as virtual machines on an actual server. So when a player hacks into an in game server, it's an, a VM instance. Control it, sandbox it just a little bit. Uh, player hacking would, pro it would be done with Metasploit. And since uh, I would be Metasploit would be used. The JVM seems like a possible target platform. Ahaha, uh -huh, it's not very secure. And so I'm thinking it would probably be done in JRuby because Metasploit, Ruby, JRuby. Help wanted. This is where I say I want to do this. Uh, I don't think it's quite ready to be done, but I am looking for people who are interested in working on this project with me, especially from the security crowd, since I don't really know this stuff that well. 
And questions and or feedback? Sounds awesome. Yes. <laughs> about what happens when someone hacks the game servers. The actual servers that host the VMs. Ban them. They win. They win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They win forever. That name's taken over. <coughs> the, game, the game world uh, nukes itself. <laughs> what, what about hacking the marketplace? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So one thing that I was trying to grapple with is to what extent do you actually control the hacking piece? Do you make a like, push button on each side so you have operators on each side and you're pushing buttons? You have to know which buttons to push to do the right hacks, though. There's a problem of you know, turning somebody loose you know, in a terminal to do whatever. It's kind of hard to track the whole progress of the game, I think. Well, yeah, that's the primary issue with this concept as a whole is how do you keep <coughs> These skiddies who have no idea what they're doing from wrecking your games and uh, the game's servers mm -hmm. and all that player data. How do you keep them from messing that up? Yeah. And it, so, is your is your intention that you know, people players will have you know they'll be sitting at a regular shell in this virtual environment, or would they be like you know uh, locked into something that basically lets them? You know, simulate running a pre-configured environment. Yeah, or like something that lets them, you know, simulate running MMAP against a target, running that status point against a target, etc. Or are they actually running them against? Is the there'd be a lot more freedom and, and a lot more fun as a player if it really is if it's a real you know shell and whatnot. However, then there's just so much more potential for them to go off the rails, yeah. and so it's much so it would be much harder to build. It seems. Yeah, security would be an issue with this. Yes, I, I have a couple of suggestions. Okay. Uh, First, talk to the guys who are doing the Networks project run by SANS. They Net have a worries. great scoring engineer engine, and they actually have been working on making it portable so other people could use it in localized editions, and maybe they'll adapt a lot of what they do for scoring or, or you know isolation of stuff so people can abuse it as well. The other thing, um, there are a couple of programs out there for building RPG style of elements that might be really useful uh, for building not, not, you know, not uh, like the interface, but some of the back end, so you don't have to think of all the logic behind how a random choice happens or how an event would come up inside of the, uh, the uh, gameplay. So you don't have to rebuild every single piece of software out there. Uh, well, there's lots of open source risk. I mean, this is essentially risk with hacking. Yep, you know, that's so exactly what I was thinking. There are open source about. projects out there already that you can take and modify. Yeah. Okay. Or, or I'm sure that Sans would love someone who has programming <coughs> to do the interface for networks. Yeah. Hmm. Like to make it more interactive visual environment. So you can offer that. Counterhack Challenges is the name of the company that does networks. Uh, it's Scotus is the person who's running that. You. Yes. Uh, building off the networks thing, uh, Ed and Tim had to work on a new thing called Cyber City. That one's more on the visual side, where there are a bunch of infrastructure, like a missile defense system run by the army and like a hospital where everything is hackable. Um, you might be interested in looking at that. It's really cool. It's really interactive. Um, it's really hands-on in terms of actual attacks. And it's really innovative in terms of what you have to do, because you have to interface with a bunch of different systems that they set up. And then you have to learn how they got everything working after getting access in there. Um, what is it called again? Cyber, Cyber City. City. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 10,000 <laughs> users actually simulated to have bank accounts, do transactions. It's basically take an entire city and virtualize <laughs> it in a pen testing environment so that they can run whatever kind of pen testing situations they want. If your goal is to go launch a nuke at China, through this virtual environment, and the city has nukes. That's about the panel later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, you want to take over some such as bank account or whatever it is. The goal would be to make that a environment where you can do all of those things at once. Cool. Also, for the marketplace, if you're going to introduce new elements like new ODs and stuff, how are you actually going to do that? If it's going to be hands-on, if you're actually if you're actually attacking a real server, like right? the um, server. Like, why wouldn't they just bring their own? I guess. Because, they, because they have no idea what they're doing and they're just skiddies. <laughs> <laughs> this so entire rely hinges on the people playing the game having, having no idea what's going on behind so what's the, goal? the screen. Can't last long. The goal is to win. <laughs> right. What's your goal? My goal? Mm -hmm. 
Well, I haven't really done any uh, real serious projects with people before. So Especially would security you, would stuff. Would it all be more of a training aspect, or would it mean more of just for fun? I think that's kind of what... Well... The way you put it was a not-so-serious game. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a half cyber warfare simulator ha slash half political awareness razor about the effect, the real world effects on not having security slash bad attempt at complex multiplayer game. Cool. So, so it seems like it'd be a lot more attainable to, uh, to hide the detail, like to fake the details, to just be like, here's your menu. Well, you're you're level one, so you have the ability to end map and run like these simple Metasploit payloads. Hit a menu option, don't actually run it. And then when people buy stuff from the store, they buy the ability to do, you know, uh, NSE scripts or more Metasploit payloads and stuff. But you fake all of that, you don't actually, that way, you have a lot easier time controlling the environment for the players, so they don't have, to, and if your players are, you know, intended market is, is you know skitties like you're saying, then they wouldn't mind anyway. They wouldn't. It wouldn't hurt them to not have the ability to actually run stuff. Or maybe that's one layer. That's you start out with yeah. that, and then you could add in another. You could add in some real hacking as, as another layer. That could be the ultimate. You have to level up. Yeah. Yeah. Like level ten, you unlock training mode. Yeah, it's the command <laughs> prompt. Yeah. If you do enough stuff to where it doesn't respond anymore, then you know you want. <laughs> <laughs> button mashing. Thanks. Yeah. Thank okay. You.